joint work uh, with Matthew, uh, Gautam, and Yao Liang. So uh, recently we have experienced a lot of advances in machine learning system. For example, stable diffusions, which can generate excellent images uh, using text prompt. And for example, OpenAI Sora, which can generate videos. And also GPT-4, I'm sure many of you are using it in a daily basis. So if you take a look at this kind of machine learning system and how they trained and deployed, it can be roughly summarized to four steps. So the first step is data collection, for example, using public available uh, data collector tools such as Common Crawl, which I'll get a public data set, data set for example, line 5b, such that by training on this data set, uh, for example, on a deep neural network, I can acquire machine learning models such that I can use for my task, right? So this kind of deployment scheme or machine learning pipeline can also be called like end-to-end -end deployment. So what we argue over here is that for this end-to-end -end deployment, it's not always feasible for some task. For example, if we check the pr practicality of this kind of, the, uh, this kind of pipelines, we can see that to achieve good performance, we have to rely on big data sets and huge models, right? So this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, is resource uh, very heavy. And secondly, even if we have this kind of resource, uh, it's sim simply not possible sometimes to collect this kind of data. For example, for certain applications, uh, as we have seen before in the previous uh, presentations, medical imaging, and for example, 3D vision, uh, and for example, 3D printing, we need, to, we need to get different uh, properties for optimization, for example, in civil engineering. And next, uh, AI for science applications, such as drug discovery. So all of these applications can be, uh, can be very hard to collect data. And we argue here is that for this kind of personalized task or task out of region of uh, where we can collect massive data, they usually uh, acquire a scheme where instead of considering the end-to-end -end, uh, deployment scheme or machine learning pipeline over here, we are abstracting it to what we call a general feature extractor F, right? So this F can be trained uh, by another party, which is already acquired and can be utilized by personalized users. And specifically, uh, a personalized users may use some data set he collects, which may be a small portion. For example, in medical imaging, we are acquired the data set and I train an additional uh, linear layer on top of my fixed pre-trained encoder F, such that uh, I can get a good accuracy, uh, uh, I can get a good classifier. Where for inference, I'm using the entire F and the edge uh, for a good prediction, right? So the whole goal of our paper is to understand uh, a threat which we call uh, data poisoning attacks. And specifically, uh, we're considering indiscriminate data poisoning attacks. So by indiscriminate, we mean we don't care about any specific target sample, but we want to care about the entire population of test data. So for example, we wa I want to decrease the overall model accuracy or model performance. And to make an example over here in the context of fine tuning, I still have my personalized uh, data uh, that, I, uh, that I collect. Uh, the only difference is that there exists a malicious party or attacker over here that he can, can inject some poison data, which is usually of small portion compared to, po uh, compared to your personalized data, such that by training on this mixed data set, on this frozen F and trainable edge, which is a linear head, I want to change the model behavior. And as I've said before for indiscriminate attacks, uh, the model behavior I want to induce is to have an accuracy, accuracy drop on the test set. For example, I can quantify it as, for example, 25% with 3% of uh, poison data, which I will show an example later on. So uh, motivated, motivated by the previous slides, uh, now I'm ready to present the three research questions I aim to answer throughout this presentation. The first one is that, uh, how do we tackle this problem, right? How do we perform indiscriminate attacks with a fixed, in, uh, fixed encoder uh, with, through this fine tuning process? And this answer is not straightforward because if you think about it, if you directly apply existing methods, you basically inject data in the input space. However, you want to change the linear head like through a fixed encoder. So this is not straightforward. And in practice, we find this kind of attack is not very effective. So basically, uh, one word solution is to perform feature poisoning on a logistic regression model, which I will specify in the next slides. So suppose we already have some kind of poison features uh, in the feature space. The next step is like, 
we cannot directly use it, right? Because attacks cannot be directly deployed in feature space. So next, uh, next question would be how to invert it back to the, the, the input space or through data poisoning. And which is our second problem of interest, that to invert our poison feature back to the input space, which we propose two kind of new attacks. And thirdly, we want to examine the performance of our attack on different downstream tasks, uh, given a pre-trained encoder F, right? So next, I'm ready to jump into our first request question. Uh, how do we tackle the problem? So now, let's take a step back from the fine-tuning procedure to the normal supervised learning or end-to-end -end training, where we have some results for existing attacks. This is acquired from previous papers uh, that we already know uh, for indiscriminate attacks. Uh, for shallower uh, neural networks, it's easier to poison than deep neural networks. For example, if you see this table uh, on the very right column, you can see that for logistic regression, the accuracy drop is dramatic for only 3% of poison data, which can be 22%, almost 23%. However, if you compare with neural network and convolutional neural network, this number is much lower, right? So which indicates that shallower neural network is much easier to poison. So motivated by these known facts, uh, if we take a look again at our problem of interest, which is poisoning a pre-trained feature extractor with additional linear head, if you think about it, actually the entire process, the data is fixed, right? The model is also fixed. So how about we just directly look at it as a single, uh, as a single component, where basically what we have is that instead of an input data set, we are acquiring a feature data set, right? So instead of the, uh, the input space that can be interpretable, now we have different vectors like uh, features. Uh, so we acquire clean features and poison features. So now we, we're getting a very simplified problem that we are directly performing po feature poisoning on top of a logistic regression model, right? And based on our intuition or no facts for supervised learning, we already know it's easy. And the next step is to verify it. So which we call it uh, a feature space attack. And this is a direct uh, application from uh, from previous papers, which is called gradient canceling attack. The only difference is that we treat the uh, feature data set instead of input data set. And here we can see that the attack performance is actually amazing. With only 3% of poison data, I can incur 36% of accuracy drop, and which matches uh, my intuition on like logistic regression is easy to poison, right? So this is great. Like I get my poison features and I can directly put uh, poison, the de poison the model with great accuracy drop. It looks like a great threat. However, if you think about it, like feature poison is simply not possible, right? It's never possible to inject features directly, and you still have to do it through input data. So this is our list. List to our second uh, problem is that whether data poisoning is equal to feature poisoning. So how we verify this is by directly. Uh, deploy like the attacks that have been designed before, which is GC input space attack. So compared with GC feature space attack, we can see that the attack performance suddenly drops from 36% to only 2.5%, which indicates that data poisoning is not equal to feature poisoning and something's going wrong here, right? And so the takeaway first of this paper is that it looks like to tackle this problem, generating poison features is ex extremely easy. We can we can incur 36% accuracy drop with only 3% of data. However, to invert them back to the data space is extremely hard. And you cannot do it implic implicitly with existing attacks. So we are trying to accomplish this by explicitly inverting it back. And this leads to my second part of the talk, uh, which I am to tackle the another problem, which is inverting the features back. So to summarize, what I have just said for GC feature space attack can be summarized to uh, this one step one and step two. So this is a direct uh, utilization of previous work. So if you're interested in this part, I'm happy to chat offline. So the only takeaway over here is that uh, I, I, I just get these features I want, right? Which incurs 36 accuracy drop, which we denoted by zeta, which is a poison feature. And the next task is to invert this poison feature back to the input space, which we call new, which is a poison data. And we want this poison data to satisfy certain properties is that we want its feature to match this target feature, right? So this is what we want. And now we can use this intuition to solve our second problem, 
which is how to invert the poison features back to the input space to certify our desired property. And there are two kind of uh, new attacks we propose. And one is more through intuition, and another one is through direct optimization. So the first thing, we if we think about it, uh, if you consider, if you're familiar with image reconstruction task, you must have heard of something called autoencoder, right? So an autoencoder consists of, of an encoder and a decoder, where we naturally find that uh, the feature extractor is just part of autoencoder, right? It's just the encoder part. And if we want to invert the features back, we just need to use the decoder, which is the F inverse, and which is equal to the decoder, right? And now this is very convenient because we already have uh, our F, which is fixed, and we already have, have our poison features. So the only, only task over here is, is to train a decoder. However, this is not straightforward, and this has not, not been done before, is to train an autoencoder with a fixed encoder. And this turns out to be super hard. And we haven't shown the result here, but uh, the acquired images or the image reconstruction is super bad, like it's very noisy. So wh what we do is that um, we're trying to seek for a more advanced uh, architecture, which is the UNET architecture, which is, has been proposed before for better quality, uh, better image quality for a reconstruction purpose. And using this method, we found the reconstructed images is in super good quality. However, this also brings out a difficulty is that we also, the output also depends on the input, which you can see that this involves all the skip connections that depends on the input, right? Which is our mu prime over here, uh, which uh, is, can just be clean data. So in summarization, for poison sample generation, we have the following equation, which we have the F inverse that we trained before on clean data, and we take the poison features over here, and we also have the input space for the skip connections. So basically, mu prime is chosen as whatever uh, input data you want the poison data to look like. So uh, sadly, this is not the end of story over here. Uh, this method is st still not that good. And how we know that is by verifying this property we have in our subtitle, which is F new equals to data. So basically, we perform an additional experiment on this. Uh, and we find that the distance between F new and theta is still large, is on the quantity of 150, and we want it to be as small as possible, almost close to zero. So which indicates this method is still not optimal, and which leads to our final goal, um, to, exact, to exactly achieve this, uh, this problem of interest F new equals to zeta. So if we take a look from the optimization perspective, a good set of poison data new should uh, satisfy, satisfy two properties. The first one we already lays on the, on the title that we want F new to be equal to the, the poison features or the target feature we want in the feature space. And another thing is that we want the poison data to look legitimate, right? To look like clean data. And this is our second constraint on the input space where we want the poison data to look like realistic images. And using this kind of simple intuitions, we can construct our optimization uh, problem exactly, where the first term we're considering the feature loss, which is exactly uh, our goal, and secondly is the input loss, where we want the imp we want the poison data to look realistic, and this this is basically our second method, which we call feature matching, and this is a a, a direct uh, utilization of previous method as well on targeted attacks. So basically, uh, this concludes my research question two, that we are able to pro propose two kind of attacks uh, on poison feature, uh, fixed feature craters on fine tuning. And next, we want to examine the performance of our attack. And specifically, we're considering two kind of downstream tasks. And here we are acquiring our feature uh, fixed, fixed feature extractor F using a popular method called contrastive learning. And over here that we are performing fine tuning on the same data set and transfer learning to other data sets. And now I'm ready to uh, give you our, our, our main results. Uh, we're, we're comparing three different components. The first is end-to-end, -end, which is supervised in standard data poisoning, and fine tuning, which we train and do linear evaluation with a fixed encoder on the same data set, which is CIFAR 10, and transfer learning by training on ImageNet and transferring to different data sets here we're considering two natural data sets, CIFAR 10 and 100, and also a medical data set, which is called Patch Camelon, which is used for tumor classification. And here are two takeaways from this uh, table. If you compare row one and row two, 
you can see that fine tuning on the same data set is more robust against uh, indiscriminate attacks from uh, 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 attack accuracy drop from 13% to only 6.3%. And secondly, which is more significant, is that for transfer learning, we can see that for when transferring to nat natu natural images such as CIFAR 10 and 100, is the attack performance is not that good. However, when a more dramatic distribution shift exists, uh, these are more, more vulnerable to indiscriminate attacks. So to summarize, uh, in, this, in this presentation, we answer three research questions. Firstly, how do we approach this problem? We're using a surrogate, which we perform feature poisoning. And to make this realistic, the second question we are solving is to invert it back to input space. And thirdly, we are examining our attack performance. Uh, and finally, I want to lay some impact and future works of uh, this presentation. Firstly, uh, basically we want to remind people that indiscriminate attack can be a serious threat uh, upon transfer learning, which are basically used every day for, for personalized tasks. Uh, for example, medical imaging. And secondly, it's like data authentication and sanitization are of vital importance, which is exactly our next step. Um, and certainly, it's like our work cannot, uh, is not only restricted to supervised learning, but can also be uh, extended to fine-tuning language models and foundation models, for example, LDM-based uh, models such as Fire Dream Boost, which is also our active project. And this concludes my presentation. And